When you do the stitches for scallop, so this is BR5, the only way to adjust the length of the scallop is to increase or decrease the number of stitches per inch. But there always will be 10 stitches in a, each one of those scallops. Now that may be the look you want, but you know, I've tried to always think, oh, well, I need to buy a digital machine where you can extend those. Why didn't any of these vintage machines come, you know, when you get the knob that you can adjust for reverse, why wouldn't they allow me to do that, all that? I've overcomplicated this a bit. Okay, the reason I point that out is because of something I thought of today, which I'm sure most of you have thought of, but I realized I didn't for whatever reason. I tried to overcomplicate this thinking, oh, we'll buy a digital machine. So let me just cut the threads of one second, I'll be back with you. So I've got this set to stitch um, on the right side, and I've set it to three. Now I'm going to try and, oops, now it decreases to a lot. Somewhere in here. I might want to do it a bit more. should have two hands to do this, but just have to do this the hard way. So if you imagine that you line this up perfectly, not that I'm doing very well with one hand here. Let's try again. I'm going to reduce this slightly again. That's better. What you see is, following this logic, I can use, oops, I need to put my uh, satin stitch foot on for a second. It's very naughty of me not to put my satin stitch foot on. It always causes these problems. One sec. Okay, satin stitch foot on. So what you realize is you can use the machine to make sure the scallops are good quality in the right lane. And then, you can overstitch them with a zigzag of whatever width you want. Thereby giving the actual result that I want, which is that. Not the splat before, but you get the idea. You know, using two hands and doing it properly. Quite easy to do. The only challenge is when you get to the end of the scalp to make sure you're in the right place. So sometimes you might have to stop, skid back slightly, put the needle down to spin it. Easier with two hands, of course. Now you could also potentially do this in center needle position, but I find it's easier in left and right needle position, just so it's, you can monitor. And what that means is, you can see there, you can get very good quality. Obviously, I'm not a little imperfect there, still practicing. But whatever size you want, you can do follow this rule. And that works really well. And it's quick to do. I never thought it'd be this quick. It would take long to overstitch that scallop to make it really nice. So the biggest challenge is to make sure you get the needle down in the right position when you pivot. So this will work on pretty much any vintage machine. So I'm going to come around here and go to the smaller scalps just for fun, so you can see how that looks. Put the needle down, spin this around. Okay, and off we go. So, now we're on the opposite side, but that's okay. Okay, pivot it around that way. A little more exciting when you got the smaller scalp, so might need to decrease the stitch width slightly to maybe two to make it more sympathetic. Okay. There we 
can go reverse, just bring it back. There's no harm in going reverse when you've got the satin stitch foot on. So I'm going to reduce this to one and a half, I think. Can't say that's actually reducing at the moment. Oh, stupid me. I was doing it in reverse and making it bigger. <laughs> it's because I'm sewing on the right side, so just me. There we go, reduce this. So there we go, that's smaller. So that's one, so that's a nice look. So I'll do a couple more like that so you can see what those look like. That's nice, smaller, so you can get bigger, smaller, whatever look you want. So the small is very nice. So you get the idea, you can do really good results. Mine are imperfect here, with, you know, I need both hands to get this done. But you get the idea, it works really well. So let me just increase this a bit to three which is where I started. Now that looks really smart. Let's go back here, reverse a couple of stitches to bring it back into line, and then off we go again. Really, really nice results. So there's a way to get more out of your scallop patterns. And that will apply to all sorts of different types of things. So if you look at BP5 here, you could use that and follow that along as well and have quite a different shape. Um, any of these single-stranded type uh, patterns you can stretch out and fill in. So even if you wanted to use your pyramid and have a giant pyramid, you can do that with that as well. So f a little bit of fun to be had by uh, exploring that. Anyway, bye for now.